but I just want to cover the amp and what it does. So as you go across the board here, you've got a clean channel and you've got a distortion channel and you've got an OD1 and OD2 on this amp as well and stuff. So you've got a couple different cleans, a couple different distortions you can run in there. And you've got, um, there's different effects. You've got different delay effects. You've got different, you've got chorus, phaser, flanger, um, and a uh, uh, vibe on there as well and stuff. You've got a couple different delays on there as well. And then you've got this um, other switch right here is a dampening switch as well on the amp that actually helps with the amp as well. Giving it different sounds and stuff. Then you got a headphone in jack, and then you've got your um, store button on the side. Two different volumes. You got a volume for the the gain channel, and then you've got a master volume as well. Um, you've got a volume for the clean channel as well. So there's a couple different volumes on there. So you can adjust the volumes for the levels when you're playing, because you want your clean and your distortion kind of be the same. Maybe it sorts just a hair a little bit up when you come into it, and then you want your lead channel to be have a little boost in it. And so, so I run on this thing, I have a clean channel, I have a um, rhythm channel, I have a lead channel, and then my fourth switch is actually for um, the tuner that is on the, the, the pedal itself. Now you don't have to use any of this stuff either. If you want, you can just plug in and, and play. If you're a guy that doesn't use pedals and just hooks up effects and has one sound going on, then you can just tweak it however you want. Or you can just run out of the clean channel and run a pedal board or your own pedals through it and not use any of the effects on here if you want as well. So it's a very versatile amp. But for somebody that wants to plug in, play, and go, um, this was a great amp when it came out. Now, I don't remember how long ago they came out with it, but I thought it was a great thing. They made a bunch of different versions of it. They still have the small, I think they have the, I think they have the MG30 and the MG50, I think is still left in the lineup, but they're not doing them anymore, which is kind of a shame because for a, a young kid growing up and coming in there and wanting just a good all-in-one amp, these were a great, great choice. Now, I know um, there's a... Um, Dave Simpson, who's over in uh, um, Europe, he loves these these MG100 heads as well. He has a few of them. And you should go watch some of his videos. Um, it's Dave Simpson. Um, or you can check out the Dave Simpson Trio. And he actually has several of these heads. And he loves these heads. And he, he plays all kinds of stuff with them. But it's just a great, great amp. And I just wanted to play a couple sounds for you guys. Like I did the intro because for me, I'm a rock and metal guy. So I like that heavier sound. So, um... Basically, I'm just running this Schecter guitar straight into the amp and using the, the pedal here. Now, the one thing I always liked about these amps is the chorus that they have on them. So let me turn the chorus on. The chorus sound that they have on them has always been really, really, really nice. And I've always liked it. so I've always enjoyed it. Um, you've got an OD, um, and I'll do this for you. Um, 
on the distortion sounds over here, you've got an OD1, OD2. Um, this is an OD2 sound that I actually have programmed in, but I'll play the OD1 from too. So we'll do that same riff and let you guys hear that. distortions you get. I actually like the, the OD2 because it's kind of a deeper guttural thing so if I'm playing something heavier because um, I like to do that chunkier stuff like the, 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 a lot of the stuff I've been writing lately has been more um, either punky or heavier stuff. Um, if you guys have been watching the videos I've been releasing of the music that I've been writing you know that I've been writing songs more punkier like um, I just released a song called uh, Dear Mr. President, and the riff is... And I like that more punkier sound, so that's what I'm doing, but that sounds really good in here. Um, hopefully it's sounding really good to you guys out there. Um, but you get these kind of um, just good sound, good just classic rock tones and stuff with it. So it has a really great clean, really great, great distortion. In that clean, um, that ha I'm running chorus, a little bit of delay on, on the clean channel. And then on my, my distortion channel, I'm running, uh, uh, and reverb, sorry. On the clean, it has chorus, delay, and a little bit of uh, um, reverb. And then on the distortion channel, I'm running um, just a smidge of delay and reverb and that. And then on the lead channel, it's chorus delay and reverb, which is this is the lead channel that I have set in there right now um, to give you guys an idea. That's kind of the lead channel I have stuck in there. Um, so just to give it, I, I like that chorus in there, uh, especially when I'm playing on, on the neck pickup that turn the light back on there.
it sounds like that, but it usually sounds better when you go up to a neck. <laughs> studio and it's also a backup like if I was going to gig somewhere and I'm taking one of my oranges and stuff well I have a backup from orange too but if I wanted to back up to excuse me you know amp with a hundred watt head this thing is, is it and this thing is allowed to play any stadium anywhere you want to go but it's a super cool amp and I just wanted to talk about it a little bit you know does it is it a capable to hold up to you know all the stuff that's coming out now and stuff to play like rock and metal and, and I, I think it can I think it can really um, play what you want to play I mean even if you're playing a classic if you're a classic rock guy that it's that ACDC stuff that I think it'll do it just fine you know I think you could still pick this amp up for a decent price and not break the bank, bank used and, and it will definitely um Hold its own, you know. Now, do I think this is, is, is as good as my orange stuff? No. I got to tell you, orange for me is, is it. But I, I will say that I've always enjoyed this amp. It's always a fun amp. I always go back to it and play it. Like, the reason why I decided to make this video is because I was in the studio and I was jamming and I was playing through my normal rig. And I looked over here and I was looking at this, amp, this Marshall and I said, I need to show that Marshall some love. Um, because it's still a great amp, but I think after all these years that it's been out, because it's been out a long time, the MG series has been out for a very, very long time, and uh, I mean a long time. I mean the MG series came out back when I was living in Colorado years and years ago, so probably, you know, I, man, I mean it's been a long time, probably around, you know, when I first saw them was probably around 2013, 2014, maybe 2014 is when I saw them, so it's been out a, a long, long time. I mean these amps have been out a while. And so, um, really, 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 and they probably, I don't remember, if somebody remembers, put down in the comments when the MG series came out, when they came out with the MG um, 100s and stuff. They had a silver-plated one, and then I like, I like the classic gold that Marshall does. That's the classic look to me, so I like the classic look of this amp. But um, you guys tell me what you guys think. I mean, do you think that a Marshall MG, the, the Marshall MG 100 HFX, or any of the Marshall MG series amps, would still be a viable amp to play in today's market and in today's world? Or do you think that they're outdated and, and you need to go to something else? Um, for me, I like the, I, I'm a keep it simple stupid guy and I like keeping things simple. I like that old classic sound, you know, and I, I like that great just, you know, classic sound. I don't need a bunch of digital stuff. So I like to keep it as simple as possible. And I thought this was a great rig when they came out. It was very simple. You could get the foot switch, but the foot switch didn't come with it, which is kind of cruddy. But um, you had to buy that extra. But it's only like thirty-four bucks. And then you had this thing. And the great thing about this foot switch that's awesome is this foot switch works on guitar cables. So any length of guitar cable you have, you can run it out to where you need to. So that was a great innovation back then that you could use a long guitar cable and have that foot switch out there, and you could actually play a show. So I've always liked that capability about this amp that you had that foot switch that you could plug a guitar cable into it and you could run it all the way out to where you needed to. So no matter what size stage you were on, you could run your foot switch out there. And if you're a rhythm guitar player like me, that was great because I'm usually only using two channels. I am not a lead guitar player by any means. I'm a rhythm guitar player and I thought this was a great amp for somebody like me that plays rhythm guitar. And to me, it's still a great amp today. I mean, I, I've always enjoyed this amp. I think it's a great amp. I love this setup with the 212 combo. Um, I don't need a big full stack. A 212 uh, a cabinet with a 100 watt head is more than loud enough to play anywhere. And if you don't think so, Joan Jett's been playing out of a 212 Music Man her whole career. So, and that's all she's ever used is she has a couple different Music Mans and stuff that are her favorite amps that she's been touring around. So you don't need a big massive amp. You can actually do it with a 112 if you really wanted to. People just like those bigger amps because it looks cooler on stage. But um, it seems like nowadays people are going for the smaller foot, footprint instead of back in the 80s where you had those wall of, of 
of speakers up there, which uh, if you guys don't know, most of those speakers, when you saw the wall, speakers were empty, and there's usually only like two, two of them that actually had cabinets in them with speakers in them, and that was the clean channel and the lead channel. All the rest of that stuff was just for show from back in the day, but it sure did look cool. But anyway, um, that's my quick kind of overview of the Marshall MG100, and um, what I still think about it, I still think it's a great amp. Me personally, I still think it's a great amp. I would love to hear what you guys think about the Marshall MG series. If any of you guys have the Marshall MG series or had experience with it, I'd love to hear your experience with it and what you think about it. Whether you love it or hate it, I'd like to hear it. Me personally, it's always been a good little amp, and it's always going to stay with me. It's one of the amps that I'm not going to get rid of because they're hard to find. They're hard to find. They're, they're hard to find, and if you do find one that's in good shape that hasn't been abused, I would say snatch it up because it's a great backup head if nothing else. If you just need a clean channel and you need a 100-watt head, I mean, you can't go wrong with it. You know That's why I love my little mini stack. I have a mini mini stack in the, in the house. Maybe I'll do a review on that one day, the little mini stack that I have in the house that I practice at all the time. But I still get that classic Marshall sound with this without having to break the bank and have a, you know, a JVM 800 or something like that. You know, I can still get a really good sound out of this with this amp. So I'd love to hear what you guys think about it, your thoughts on this amp. Um, me personally, I still love it and it's going to stay in my studio and get passed down to my, my kid <laughs> one day. So anyway, that's all I got for you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Do me a favor, hit that like and subscribe button down below. And also, if there's anything else you guys want to see, if there's something in the room as you guys look around and you want me to talk about or make a video about, you know, let me know. And, and if, I, if you haven't seen the video, if I've already done a video, I'll refer you to it. If I haven't, then that'll give me an idea of something maybe you guys want to see or talk about. I just did a, a video on all my Schecter guitars. I'm going to do another video going through all my bass guitars as well, and then I will get around to some of the other guitars. And then I will eventually do a video of all my guitars, because um, since I did my last guitar video with all my guitars that I have in my collection, I have accumulated a few more, so I'd like to cover those. Um, I think I am going to part with a couple, though, that um, I haven't decided what I'm going to do with them. But I've got a couple Les Pauls. I'm kind of thinning out the Les Pauls. Um, I'm keeping a couple, but uh, um, they're so heavy. And with, with my back and shoulders injuries that I have, um, they're just harder for me to play. So I think I'm going to pass them on to somebody else and pick up some more Schecters or something of that nature. Um, probably ESP, Schecter, somewhere around there. It's going to be one of the two, most likely. I, I may swap out some basses or something, too. I don't know. I'm always juggling them, but I always have a bunch of guitars coming and going, and I keep a certain amount around, and I have several that I'm never going to part with, including this um, Schecter Silver Mountain you see me sitting here right now. So anyway, that's all i got for you guys. Like I said, like and subscribe down below, questions, comments down below, and we will see you guys on the next video. Just do yourself a favor and keep rocking out there.